So yesterday some massive news and even a small event hit with Tesla and that is the version 3 Tesla supercharging. Finally here. Finally, uh, yes. We've been hearing about it for a very, very long time. Last year they said it would be by Q1 of this year, and here we are. So a little backstory though, Tesla actually has almost 13,000 superchargers worldwide, and they are going to continue growing that, especially in 2019. So they actually said 99% of the US population is covered by the network and they are anticipating similar coverage in Europe by the end of 2019. And in China, they just recently passed 90% population coverage. So they are quickly moving on up there. However, Australia, we would definitely like to see some more there and a couple other places. So on to the version three supercharging. They said it is a completely new architecture for supercharging. We did actually see some liquid cooled cables long ago, yep. but for a very short amount of time. And maybe that was like one of the prequel tests. Yes, they were testing those. I think it was at the Mountain View supercharger yeah. at the uh, like the, the computer museum that's out yep. there. And they tested them there and then they removed them after a while. But I think that yeah. was their you know alpha test or whatever to see if the technology worked. And then since then, they've come out with this new architecture. And they now these new version three superchargers are going to have this one megawatt power cabinet, which is a lot more powerful than the cabinets that yeah. they used on the version two superchargers. And these cabinets are going to allow cars to charge it up to 250 kilowatts each. That's a Model 3 is able to charge that fast. Yeah. We don't know yet how fast the S and X will be able to charge it. That will allow a Model 3 to gain up to 75 miles worth of charge in just five minutes, and that equates out to a thousand miles of charge per hour if you were able to maintain that rate throughout the entire hour. That's crazy. And well, again, that's in the Model 3. On the S or X, it would be less just because they're not as efficient. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's an amazing amount. I think for S and X, you could still get between probably seven and 800. Yeah. You'd still get quite a bit, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully that's it will That's assuming it would have the same capabilities. Exactly. We, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We're probably sure that some of the older cars can't, but there's still the possibility that the 100 kilowatt hour batteries in the S and the X might be able to do charge at a faster rate, more than the 120 yeah. kilowatt hours that they're currently limited to. Even without bumping up that via a firmware update, Elon did tweet that they're going to enable a new feature, which is to preheat batteries yep. to allow you to arrive at a supercharger with the battery at the optimal temperature. And basically you just have to navigate to a supercharger, mm -hmm. or if you already navigate on a road trip and you have a supercharger as one of your stops, it will basically make sure that the battery gets charged up to the perfect temperature so that you will spend less time at the supercharger. And that's supposed to yeah. save 25%. Of it. And the way I understand it is they just won't actively cool the batteries as much as they normally would because batteries actually accept a faster charge rate and everything, the warmer they are, up to a certain temperature, obviously. But that's what I understand the most of it is, is just cooling or heating the batteries. Yeah, and you know, if you're on a long road trip and you're going two hours between stops, you're probably not gonna be needing that as yeah. much, but this is gonna be really useful for those people who maybe live in town or can't charge at home and mm -hmm. just need to drive over and charge a supercharger. Instead of them having to sit there and wait for the battery charging to ramp up, yeah. the car will be able to preheat that and, and really cut down on their charging time. Yeah, and Elon actually said, when you are navigating to a supercharger, you won't actually see any degradation of like it's, mileage and everything because so the usage is very very low. It's really low. I saw some numbers I don't know how accurate they were, but they were just talking about you know a couple kilowatts per hour yeah. is what it would take So it really doesn't look like it's gonna be that much of a drain Another thing that's really supposed to help some time if you're at one of these busy superchargers Especially in California mm -hmm. is that there will be no more pairing on these version 3 superchargers yeah. so For those of you who don't know how pairing works if you go to a normal version 2 supercharger You'll see that their stalls are numbered with uh, their labeled with numbers and letters. And so if you have 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, superchargers that have the same number actually share a stack of superchargers. And so if somebody else is charging there on 1A and you arrive at 1B, you have to share that 120 kilowatts with them. As their charge speed decreases, yours will gradually ramp up, but it, it won't exceed that you know, 120 kilowatts. This not having to be paired, I think is huge. Yeah, so basically with these new version three superchargers, each one of them should allow a Model 3 again to yeah. charge at up to 250 kilowatts 
But the thing is, is I believe that they, at least the word is now, that they're not going to be upgrading any of the current version 2 yeah. superchargers. Basically, they're going to be filling in with version 3 superchargers on some of the routes that need them. So we have a map for you of all the current supercharger version 3s that they've launched so far. Here it is! Take it in, folks! And, okay, so actually they're not <laughs> building them yet. This was The one yep. that they had the event at was just a temporary beta one for testing and you know working out the bugs. Mm -hmm. But they're supposed to be uh, breaking ground in second quarter in the United States and completing those later in the third quarter of the year and then expanding into Europe and the rest of the world Q4. later in Q4. So we did see that the beta location that they have set up right now is Fremont, pretty close to the factory, but we've also yep. seen pictures that they are already upgrading the Hawthorne supercharger down in the Los Angeles area. Yeah, so they've removed several of the supercharger shells from one side, and so they, I imagine that's being upgraded right now, which makes sense because that location can get very crowded. So since they're not going to be upgrading a lot of locations, they actually did announce they will very soon be unlocking 145 kilowatt charge rates for those 12,000 plus version 2 chargers, which is definitely an increase. 25 kilowatts might not seem like a lot, but when you add it all up, I definitely think it's going to help alleviate a lot of that stress. So what all is in it for us Model S and X owners? Well, currently we don't know 100% for sure what the maximum limit is. As yeah. we've seen for the past couple of years, the 100 kilowatt hour batteries have been limited to 120 kilowatts of charging. And it's possible we've got the hint that they could bump that up slightly. We don't know if it's 150, 180, mm -hmm. maybe it's only 145, but it is possible, uh, you know, if you crunch the numbers, that they should be able to bump the charging rates up for those 100 kilowatt hour batteries. Maybe even possibly for the 75, but not as much. So while that could be just a software update, we're waiting to see if that is a possibility. But as we mentioned before, even without that update, if they're not able to bump it, they are going to be rolling out that firmware update to allow that battery preheating, which yeah. will allow cars to save up to 25% on a supercharge. So we kind of dived into it a little bit. We have a version two supercharger shell right here. It actually has all the internal components. If we had the electric supply, we'd be able to do this. That would um, be a big... It would be a big project, I agree, <laughs> and expensive. But we've actually been thinking about it because these new version three superchargers utilize this same shell, but they are actually liquid cooled cables and they are much thinner cables. These are actually pretty thick, whereas the version three is roughly I don't know, between 50 and 75 percent the a thickness. Lot, it's a lot closer in size to the cable that you'll find on a, a high power, high power wall, wall connector. connector. Exactly. So we've been thinking about that liquid cooled cable. How exactly are they doing a reservoir and everything? But they probably aren't in here. I'm actually thinking the cables are liquid cooled all the way to the power cabinet potentially just because that's a giant amount of energy and maybe that's why they're not upgrading a lot of the V2s. Maybe we'll just have to take a FLIR to a version 3 supercharger and uh, check it out on like the thermal imaging and see if that will give us some hints. I wonder too, like with the liquid, it, do they ever have to replace that? Or I'm sure it doesn't like... You know, so I guess it's, the way it's I'm totally viewing a it... System, exactly. Like, like you would have in a computer with a exactly. liquid cooled computer. That's what I was thinking, which means somewhere there has to be fans... A radiator. A radiator or some... of some sort, which... I don't think would fit down in here because there's no exit holes for hot air. So that's why I'm thinking it goes all the way back to the cabin. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, time will tell. If you guys it? happen to see any, definitely let us know. Yeah, it'd be interesting um, to see how, how they manage that. Yeah. Maybe if we can check the patents and stuff oh, yeah. like that, we might be able to see some images. Or potentially some blueprints. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Either way though, super excited to see version 3 supercharging starting to kind of hit the streets because it's blowing all the other electric vehicle manufacturers out of the water. It's been a, it's been a long wait, but we are ready for it. And again, as Eric just said, it's it's the fastest thing out there. I know yeah. that, that uh, Electrify America does have a few 350 kilowatt hour charging stations, yeah. but there's no cars that can use that. Exactly. Whereas every single long range and performance Model 3 will be able to Full use the 250. 250 kilowatt. No other car company even comes close to it. So uh, definitely a big, Good on you to Tesla for coming up with this and releasing it. Hopefully we hear something new about S and X. Um, yeah. It'd be nice to know that those vehicles can utilize that also. Definitely let us know what you guys think about the version 3 supercharging down below. Is this something you guys are super excited about? Do you really see this more as road trips around town? 
let us know down below and we can talk about it there. As always though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean, for helping with the channel. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model SX or Model 3, kinda like this one, definitely check out their website. Everything's linked down below and using code Tesla Inventory, all one word at checkout, will get you 15% off your first order. A lot of cool stuff they have and a lot of cool stuff coming to this car from them, so definitely check it out. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click here to subscribe. Here for some other ones. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.